Uh, our final presenter before the break is an undergraduate researcher and advocate in the areas of cancer care, therapeutics, and policy. Please give a warm welcome to Sunand Kanapan. So Dr. Hiddle, serious uh, imposter syndrome. I'm supposedly talking about science. <laughs> All right, so how many people need to take a bathroom break right now? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna be talking about data. So now, how many people need to take a washroom break? <laughs> okay, hopefully it wasn't more. All right. All right, so I'm Sanan Knappen. I'm an undergrad at the UC. I do a lot of work with data, and I'm also working with Eureka Canada, which is a data analytics think tank. So today I'm going to be talking about data in health, using data to tell stories about medicine. What is data science, and then how can we use it next in medicine? All right, so data science might not seem familiar, but I think the effects are very familiar. Right? So it helps us solve a lot of problems. Social media, right? Advertisers use big amounts of data to aggregate behavior data. Uh, next, weather forecasts. Uh, we use various data sources to predict the weather. And then apps like Uber, right? We match large groups of drivers and riders using their location and other data. But what does that data actually mean? I'll give you a little bit of a paradigm about how we solve data uh, problems, right? So firstly, we collect data, then we process it into usable forms, then we analyze it, and then finally, we actually generate insights. And that's the really cool part about data, that can help us solve problems. So what's next with data collection, firstly? Data collection is about pulling data from all these different sources, and there's some really cool things that are happening with it. Firstly, humans spend a lot more time with technology, so we can use that data. More storage, we can keep more of it. And then finally, we have really accurate ways to, to find what the correct, accurate uh, data values are nowadays. But secondly, we also have really cool ways to find insights from this data, right? How do we create conclusions from data? stronger t uh, techniques and more powerful techniques. We have gigantic amounts of you know, computational power in our, in our phones even, right? And then finally, we have more accessible ways for all of us to get access to these technological advancements of generating these insights. So um, this new age of modern data is actually really cool for medicine. It's a very unique position because medicine has a lot of data, volume, frequent data, velocity, several types of data, variety, and finally, pretty accurate data, uh, veracity. And also, this data isn't just in one part of medicine, right? It's in almost every part of medicine. It's in patient data, like personal history stuff, uh, clinical data, right? How we do during and after treatment. Also, omics, just as Dr. Hiddle has talked about, things like genomics, right? It's massive amounts of data there. And also, data about our health system. So that's a bunch of listing, but let me give you an opportunity, let me give you what that actually means. The opportunity for research means that with all of this data, we can actually solve problems in medicine. We can generate better profiles of health. So what, what actually do people, what is the health of the average person? But also we can predict outcomes in health as well. And that's, how, that's why uh, medicine is, so, is a really good place to start. So I'm gonna give you an example of this. Prognostic signatures, sounds complicated, very simple. A way to predict how long a patient will survive, right? And it's super important because we can make treatment decisions and help patients improve their quality of life using this. Um, so, let's apply the paradigm that I showed you before, right? So, apply the paradigm, data collection. We use omics data, like Dr. Hiddle talked about. We generate insights from it by correlating all of this DNA data to patient survival. And we use really cool techniques that help us find patterns, right, in the type of omics data that we collect, and then uh, patterns that correlate with lower survival times. And so this is a really cool graph, and it shows you and, you know, survival and time. And it shows you that using these cool patterns, we're actually able to predict patients that will survive for longer periods of times, the green line, it's higher survival, compared to the red line, which is lower survival. So that's really cool, and that's all because of data science, all right? But there's not only do we see this stuff very close to the patient, so not just proximal stuff. So that was predicting survival in one patient. But we also see really distal things. How can we uh, use data to make decisions on a larger level, right? System level decisions. And so uh, what I'm going to be talking about is actually about system level decision making and how data science can help. So this is about patent protection, another example that I can give you, right? So in patent protection, uh, the question is, are patents actually helping patients, right? So in the pharmaceutical industry, patents are gross and you know they make everything a lot more expensive. But the question is, 
are those things too expensive for us to, to, to afford, right? And so let's use these, the same model we used before, data collection. The type of data we get is actually how much an average person is spending on drugs. And so we connect that with patent terms and how long patent terms are, right? And so once again, we can generate insights. The insight we collect here is are patent terms correlated with drug pricing? And so using some really cool techniques, we can actually make a really cool graph here. And so what this graph shows is that when there's one person creating a drug, which is patent protected, they're way more expensive than if you use multiple, multiple people all creating that same drug, right? And so this is obviously a value judgment. We have to figure out what the answer is, but this is really cool data that policymakers can use, right? And so all of that might seem a little boring, but this is the exciting part. It's that not only are researchers able to use this, but citizens are able to use this too. Data science is effective because data collection is happening websites. We can access so much data online. And also there's so many powerful programs that each and every one of us can use. And so I'm involved with an organization called Eureka Canada. And it's all about next. It's about who is going to take control of data science in the future. It's trying to give people, give youth, access to data science procedures, uh, data, and help them make decisions in their own lives and relevant to society. So what we do, is, for example, this year, we took over 200 students from all over Canada, and we took them through a project, a project that was interesting to them, that they wanted to uh, you know, innovate some sort of new thing in that field. So we gave them data, gave them opportunities to analyze that data, and told them, run with it. And we tried to publish as many of those projects as possible. You know, these, data, the, these projects in the future are not only going to be in health science, they're going to be about environment, they're going to be about economics and politics and society and, and, and entertainment. Data is something that's free. Everyone can use it, everyone can analyze it, and everyone can make it relevant to their own lives. And I think that the key here is that we need to make sure that the next generation understands that and will use it to the best of their own ability. So thanks so much for listening. Um, I hope I change your perspective even a little bit about how boring um, data might be. I think it's pretty useful. Um, I've had a lot of time uh, to think about it, and I think it's really fun to work with. If you guys have any questions about Eureka or anything else I do, please feel free. Or if you just want to criticize like my font choices or anything, that's fine too. All right, thanks so much.